Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I thought I would talk you through some books that I have not necessarily changed my mind on but I've changed my rating on. So I'd say these are books where I have just shifted the star rating. Maybe I gave it like a four star and then on reflection I've given it a five star or I could have gone the other way and originally given it a three star and now actually I think it's a two star. And this could either be upon reflection as time's gone by or that I've reread it and my opinions shifted a little bit. These aren't books where I've completely changed my mind. Like, I don't know if it's really possible to read something the first time and give it a two stars and then reread it and give it a five stars. Like, I don't think you're... I don't know if it's possible to completely change your mind on a book. Let me know if that has happened to you, but for me... I don't think I've ever gone from hating a book to loving a book upon reread or upon reflection. I don't know if that's... Is that possible? So, uh, I've got some, I guess, positives that I've shifted the rating up and some negatives. So I'll just try and disperse them evenly. So that's evenly spread between positive and negative thoughts. To start us off, Found Your Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. And I originally read this a couple of years ago and then I reread it this year my opinion had I'd shifted it upwards. I don't know why I gave this four, 4.5 stars when I first read it, because it's a five star book. So I, I guess I was, I was wrong. I rated it too lowly and then upon reread, I realized that actually I really loved the book. And you're following um, our main character, Sancia, and she's a uh, thief. And at the be beginning of the book, she gets tasked with stealing an object and this then has a massive catalyst on the rest of the plot and it's fantasy, it's action, it's I guess like a heist, you've got the, it's the characters. So this is one where I completely shifted my rating up from a negative one, My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. When I finished this I believe I rated it three stars, I read this back in April. And then just as time went on, I realised how much I just didn't like it. So it, it's actually, it's a two star book. And I think it was just, it was a quick read. It was a thriller, but I was just underwhelmed by the, the whole thing. Yeah, as time went on, I've become to think more negatively about it. And I'm like, well, actually, no, no two stars, not a three stars. Another one where I was just a little bit negative in the beginning is for The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I, I mean, I wasn't negative. I gave it like 4.5 stars, but it should have just got the full five stars. I don't know what I was holding off on from giving it the full five stars, but yes, as the months have gone on, I read this back in January, I have realised that it stuck with me and there was absolutely no reason for me to not just give it the full five stars. Uh, this follows our protagonist, Zachary, and he discovers one day a book in the library and this book is composed of lots of short stories and one of the short stories is about him and he has no idea how a moment from his life has managed to get into an old book. And it just follows from there. Maybe I was having a, I don't know, a bad day in January. I was feeling very negative, but five stars. For one that I have lowered my rating, the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. I think that hype can definitely affect ratings of books and how we perceive our opinions on books. That you can see so many people give a book five stars and you can see their review you can see all the benefits that they're saying you can see why they've given it their rating and so you think well actually yes I can see that they that there's this good point and this good point and I can see how they've got to their rating so I should be rating it that high as well and they've given their arguments and they're very persuasive for why they've loved a book and I think I was just overcome by the hype for this book when I read it that I actually I gave it four stars, but as time has gone on, and the more I think about it, the more I realise that I didn't like it. I didn't like, I, I, I read the whole series and I didn't really like any of them. 
and I didn't gel with the writing style. I just could not connect with it at all. And so actually, this this isn't four stars. It's probably like maybe maybe not even a three stars. And I just I just want to understand like how much of it I was affected by other people's reviews and whether. I, I don't know quite where I got to this four star rating and why I kept going with this series because all I can think about now is reasons why I didn't like it. I can't remember any reason why I liked it. Yeah, not a fan and my rating has gone down. And the same for another series would be Red Rising, which I think I gave, gave the whole series four stars. But I should have given them all three stars or lower. And again, I think I was influenced by the hype and by other people's opinions and how they felt about it because now I read those quite a few years ago now but now all I can think about when I think about the series is that I didn't like the writing style I couldn't imagine the world or connect with it I can't really remember very much about it like I blanked them all from my memory so why did I give it such a high rating when all of my overlasting thoughts that have lasted the past few years are negative. What are your thoughts on this topic, like on hype and how it affects our rating and how is it possible to review in a in, in a bubble with, with no outside influence? I, I, I just, I don't know how subconsciously how much we are affected by other people. Okay, m moving on to a more positive note. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I, I'm not a massive contemporary reader, but this book has stayed with me. It's a, I guess, a rom-com, and you know, it's an office romance where the people go from hating each other to loving each other. And I, I, it was the humour, but when I first read it, I think I gave it like 3.5 stars. And then I reread it a few months later because it had just stayed with me, and I, and it's a, I gave it 4.5 stars because Although I don't read contemporary, and I never rate them highly because I don't feel as though they've got the world building, they don't have the fantasy aspect that I love. Actually, The Hating Game has stuck with me because I found it so enjoyable. It was so fun. So yes, I, re I raised, my, raised my rating for The Hating Game. My last reduction is for not for Red Sister because I think this is a four star book by Mark Lawrence. but. Holy Sister, the final book in the trilogy, I originally gave four stars. This follows Assassin Nuns, and I, I really enjoyed the first book, but then I feel as though the series went downhill, and I wanted the series to stay, like, I, I wanted the series to stay all at the same level, and originally I thought that it did, but actually the third book wasn't, I don't think it's that good, <laughs> but it's really short, and nothing really much happened and the timeline was very funny it was, and it just ended. I'm not saying it's a bad book, I just don't think it was the best conclusion to the trilogy. So I would be lowering my rating from four stars to three stars for Holy Sister. And to end on a positive note, The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, uh, which is an Eastern inspired fantasy story following Rin who gets into a military school and then her training, and following her training, the ensuing war, which is very heavily inspired by the Sino-Japanese War. And I gave this four stars, but again, I don't know why I gave it four stars, but actually it's, it's a 4.5 to 5 stars. But I, I'm very confused. Sometimes I'm very confused by old Abby. Like, what was she thinking? Was she in a bad mood? Was she just being really critical? But I think about this series all the time, that I really enjoyed it. And I don't know why I, I, I didn't give it a full five stars. I mean, maybe it's not quite a full five stars. Maybe it's like a 4.5, but it's definitely more than a four. And I'm just looking back at myself going, what were you thinking, you idiot? <laughs> you... So upon reflection, The Poppy War is a higher rating than I originally gave it. I just thought I would add 
that there are some books where I expect my rating would be different if I read it now as opposed to when I read it then but I'm not sure if I would ever want to reread it because of the nostalgia that I have around those books. So I, I, I do question what I've given the books but I don't think I could change it so for example Twilight I loved it as a teenager I know that it's not necessarily the best work of fiction as an adult but I don't think I can go back and retrospectively change my ratings on it because that would I don't that would be con I don't know like it would just be a bit weird and yeah so I, I question the ratings that I have for like Twilight and The Hunger Games I gave Earthsea five stars but then I read uh, The Left Hand of Darkness this year and really didn't like it so would I love Earthsea if I reread it? I don't know. There are some that I have read years ago that I will be rereading. So I gave Miss Bourne five stars when I read it five-ish years ago now. And I am planning on rereading that next month. So hopefully that will stay as five stars. But there is that fear when you reread of whether you're going to love a book as much as you did the first time. So please let me know down below if you have any books where you have shifted your rating slightly or if you have any books where you've completely changed your mind because I would love to know if that's even possible. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in my future videos. Bye!